world masters finalist. He's the reigning Dutch Open champion and BDO world number one. The 2018 BDO Darts World Championship Final is live next, here on Channel 4. ...and etch their names into the history books forever. Let's join your commentators, Paul Nicholson, and first of all, good afternoon, John Rawling. This is the one we've been waiting for. Glenn Durrant, the defending champion against the... BDO number one ranked player Mark McGinney. They're great friends, these two. Lovely atmosphere in the practice room for the last couple of hours. They've been warming up alongside each other. Glenn Durrant, the bookies make him the 13 to 2 on favourite. You can get 6 to 1 against Mark McGinney. Glenn Durrant, 47 years old, huge Middlesbrough fan. He's been practicing. He's been practicing with the young Australian Corey Cadby. Mark McGinney only too well aware that he's got to raise his game if he's going to live with Durant here today. Tournament average of just shy of 90 compares with Glenn Durant's of 98 and a half. If he's going to give him a match, he has to throw better than Matt McGinney, and he knows it, Paul. Yes, he does. The first start of McGinney is going to be key today. If he can get it in the bottom half of the treble 20 in, and he can build on that, he may be able to cause trouble for Glenn Durrant. Check out, Glenn Durrant has been slightly the superior there, although not a lot between them. But the nature of their games... Mark McGinney's had some battles to get here, notably 59. in his first round match against Wolfie, which went to a sudden death leg with the scores locked. He's actually played 29 more legs than Glenn Durrant. Effectively, he's played an extra match. Very well put, John. Will that have an effect on Mark McGinney? 
Interesting to see their facial expressions in the early part of this final to see how they're feeling. If we don't see anything, then they're very good poker players. Got to be some nerves for both lads. Mark McGeaney, Coventry born, now lives in Stockport with his fiancee Anne Marie, who became a grandma for the fourth time yesterday. The son Kyle and Liv. They had Liv had the baby boy yesterday. And I can tell you that Grandma Anne-Marie is absolutely made up about it. It could get better in the next few hours if Mark turns up and plays a really good game. But on 126, 57 there. Doesn't quite get there. So a good leave as Durant hasn't had the best start in leg one. No, unusual for him, but... When he hits the big numbers, he can really motor. Well, there's the treble. A little uh, raised eyebrow, as much as to say, hurrah, I've got one at last. Nagini looking to split this one. I think it's the right tactic. Double 16, which has been kind to him this week. Two hits. Very good indeed. 18 darts to start the final. That'll do. And a happy smile. Really boisterous crowd gave both players a huge welcome when they walked onto the stage. And it was lovely to see the two lads holding their arms aloft and with their hands linked. They know that this is very much a showpiece darting occasion. We've been seeing that smile all week long. Nine days of McGinney smiling. Who's going to be smiling when this is over? It's a race. First two, One, seven nine. sets. That's a good smile, isn't it? What we're going to take into consideration as well, John, is Glenn Durant has played a match for this amount of money before. Mark McGinney hasn't. Is he thinking about the cash as well? Well, if he's true to his word, he said to me last night, the money, honestly, John, does not matter. I'm here proving a point that I can really play this game. Do you know he's, he was quoted by the bookies at 25 to 1 against before it started? Double BDO number one, and you could get 25 to 1 against him winning the tournament with Glenn Durant. Something like 11 to 10, 5 to 4, and he's really on a mission to say, look, they got it wrong, I really can play this game, and I'm going to show people. Uh, all he needs is a little bit of motivation, and if that's it, use it. Again, he's had the better start here. He's been steady. It's a bit pedestrian from Durant, isn't it? Averaging 73 at this stage for a man who habitually clocks in averages close to the ton mark. He's on a finish, 88 required for the break of throw. Durant can do nothing about it, six darts from there. Pressure needs to be applied. And that is a very big finish left. I'd rather have 88 though, John. Well, I said six remaining, but maybe six, I suppose. Treble 17 for double 16. Well, treble 10 he could do with now, I would have thought. No, he's not. Forty. He's left Maybe himself on 48, Mark McGee. Glenn Durant, 167. That's good. Treble 19 now. No. So, McGee with the chance of the break of throw. This is big for him. Yeah, it is. He miscounted in his head. He mouthed what he thought he had left. But it obviously wasn't loud enough for the referee to hear it. Double 16. Double 8 again. Yeah, very much similar to the first leg in the lower part of the double, and he'll take that. And now, throwing for the first set. It's not a sprint, of course. It's a long, long format, and there'll be twists and turns, I'm sure, but this is potentially the ideal start for Mark McGinney. Steady tons all the way, and he'll take some beating in this vital leg. Yeah, we've seen in previous finals just how they can go. More twists than a packet of knickknacks. Or twisties if you're from Australia. 
Corey Cadby, who's been practicing with Glenn Durrance, very talented young Australian player. It's not a bad sparring partner, is it? Not bad at all. Yeah, 2016 World Youth Champion. And he's off to Q School. Yeah, good luck to Corey on Thursday. Might have to just play one day if he wins on Thursday. Might have to go four days. Grueling stuff coming up this week. But right now we're focused on this final. Massive support for both players. 16. And they will hope that they can feed off that. Now Durrant with the opportunity perhaps to break back. You got a favourite Lakeside final, John? Cool, that's a big, uh, big ask, isn't it? Ted Hankey was in one or two. He's had some handy finals. Oh, he? uh, Barney going back in time. I mean, I've got a, I've got a long memory. I go, I go back to, I go back to the great names of the, you know, the 80s. There've been some, there've been some fabulous matches. I have indeed. 92 was my favourite, but I also liked Adams against Nixon. What a great game. Yeah, that was that was very special. Phil Nixon, supposedly, when he was, what was he, 6-0 down? He went and uh, went and rammed some what darts into his leg time. when they went off stage, as much as to say, come on, wake yourself up, and turned out to be one of the greatest ever comebacks with Wolfie eventually clinching it 7-6. Yeah, old school stuff from Nixie. We miss him. 45, playing your acquire 97. Right, can be done, 97. Tops now. A 14 dot leg. Glenn Durrance is into it. What would it do for the confidence of Durrance if he can take the first set from 2 0 down? To kick McGinney. Yeah. I mean, he'd be feeling he'd be feeling wretched if he lost it from two up. Word of the day, that John. One. Wretched. Very descriptive. But Durrance can do that. It's a beautiful thing about set play sometimes. If you can put in a three-leg spell, especially when you're 2-0 down, you can really hurt your opponent. 100. Well, a lot of those horrible phrases, you know, it's sort of, it's never over till it's over, but it, 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 kind, of, it kind of sums this up, doesn't it? You've got to get over the winning line, and it's, it's not easy. 140. The one guy this week who knows that is Andy Bartons. Absolutely. Missed a lot of doubles. To win his quarter-final, he went home in tears, unfortunately for the Belgian. But right now, McGinney still looking for that first 180 of the final. Nothing between them. 261 apiece. But Durant with the throw. If he takes this leg as he ought to, then McGinney will have the advantage of throwing first in the deciding leg. And that's not a finish for Durant. 166. Durant will be hoping that McGinney can't get two trebles, but the adjustment is very good. But he can't leave a finish, so six darts from 166 for Durant. Nine times out of ten, he would take care of that. But this is the Lakeside final. It's not your regulation practice routine or game elsewhere. Leaves himself on 68. McGinney just trying to apply the pressure. Needs to hit the big numbers. Could do with the treble 19 here. 42. Well, it's a big advantage, Durham now. 60 the target. Single 16. For what he called yesterday in his winning interview, his favourite double, double 16. And that's a very good sign for him. Right down the southwest side of the board. And a perfect, perfect shot to put the pressure on McGinney who was cruising a couple of legs ago. Right, well, now we'll see. This is really testing McGinney's metal. One Steady turn to start, that'll do. Maybe. One thing we must tell the folks at home is that these guys, throughout their entire BDO season, play a lot of best-of-five leg darts. 81. So they'll be in this position of two legs all, cutthroat darts all the time so they'll be used to this kind of pressure but again it's ramped up this is the first set of the lakeside final totally different they've met twice uh, they've met three times before in televised matches Glenn Durrant has the advantage by two to one 
That's the trophy they're playing for. Durant filling up the trouble 20s. Vini on the darts, still just about has the advantage. This helps. That's a fine visit. Could have done with another one, but he's in a nice place. Uh -huh. I didn't think he was going to miss that 60 there. The where those darts were lying, they were perfect. And you can see the facial expression of McGinney as if to say, I can't believe it didn't go in. 60. But those three didn't go in, and that now leaves the advantage with McGinney for this first set. Moving towards it. Great first dart. Great second dart. 18 he wants now for tops. Oh, that is perfect. Literally perfect. Couldn't possibly have done any more. All Durant can do is hit a 180 and hope. Doesn't like the lie, he's gonna have to push this one in with everything he's got. And it's there! Great darts from Durant. But McGeaney now, three darts at double top for the set. Great darts! That is an important moment for Mark McGeaney. Held his nerve under immense pressure from Glenn Durrant who hammered in that maximum, the first of the match, but Mark McGinney leaves the stage with first blood. He's now one up. Great checkouts from the defending champion, and that's on 80, but a great hold of nerve for McGinney there. He will have settled down, he has the early lead. Settled McGinney's nerves, it could be crucial because Durant's checkouts in that opener show that he is more than up for this title defence. Let's rejoin your commentators. Well, an ideal start in many ways to the match. A lot of people were speculating on the possibility of Glenn Durant just steamrolling McGinney here. Well, there were signs that he was finding his range, that 180 was superb in the deciding set. But McGinney, under immense pressure, held his nerve. Tops at the first time of asking, and so Durrant, the big pre-match favourite, trails. It's 1-0 McGinney. Second set, first leg, land to throw first. Game on. In many ways, when we're looking to get as good a match as we possibly can not saying that you want either Durrant to win or McGinney to win but just to, for the sake of a cracking game of darts in many ways the ideal start I absolutely agree with you and even I said at the top of the show that the the throw for McGinney at the start of the match wasn't that important because of the amount of breaks that we'd probably get however the last leg of that set the throw was key He's sitting on tops as he gets pressure from Durant. Durant has the darts in that set. He probably takes it. So we'll see if that pattern continues. 140. Durant, one of the factors which Mark was well aware of, that Durant's B game, when he's not really on absolute prime form, he's still getting in there, averaging 93, 94, and he's going to have to go with him. There's Anne-Marie, Mark's fiance. Glenn Durrant at this stage averaging nearly 95, just over 95 now. McGinney 88, looking for another maximum. He's got the only one of the match so far. But McGinney has the stat which matters. He's got that first set in his pocket. Yes, he does. But Durrant has started this set so much better. He knows that he's going to be on that stage for more than one set this time. He wants to get the next two and get in front. 121. Great dart. Trouble 20 now for double 18. He's got it. Double 18 for a 1 2 1. How oh, about that? Line. How sweet Glenn for Glenn Durrant. Another thing that's very sweet as we look at the double percentages Durrant is on 100%. McGinney's on 60. So we've had eight shots at a double in this match, and six of them have been hit. That is prime darts at the start of this final. Good stuff, it's got the makings here. 
Durrant trying to hit him with a ton 40. A bit unlucky, just kissing off the barrel. Haven't got much of a target left after those first two. Glenn throws them very, very hard, though. In contrast to the gliding rhythm of a 180 hitting gladiator, Mark McGinney. He could have fit another nine in there. They were all on the bottom wire, John. Yeah, it was impressive. McGinney on throw with the advantage. 16. Trying to just set it up now. 221. Ton of do. Ton would definitely do. I'd definitely take a ton right now. 16. That's fine though. He's got a big advantage of 180 points. Used to be a good footballer. Glenn Durrant before darts became his thing. 16. Any idea what position he played? I don't know actually. I'll, I'll, I'll attempt to get the, that piece of information. Cheval 17 for McGinney. Would have left the ball. 78. Golf's Mark's passion. I have to see if he fancies a game this year. I'm a golfer. Yeah. He's, uh, according to Tony O'Shea, he's a bit handy. Is he a bandit? I believe so. I think he's got one of these charitable oh, handicaps. Yeah, and he hits it like a... Well, hits it a long way. He, when, it, when he hits it, it stays it. Double ten now to hold his throw. He Excellent. And so the brilliant finishing continues. Four out of six now for Mark. Three out of three for Glenn. And level pegging in the second set. McGinney knows that his doubles have got to be ship shaped today. 140. And so far, so good for both of the guys. They're getting doubles and they're getting them hit straight away. Well, it's a nice game of darts at the moment. And Mark McGinney is showing us why he's had this outstanding season on the BDO circuit. Good enough to give him the number one ranking. Well, when you win the Dutch Open. The early part of the BDO season, you've got to be able to play for a very, very long time. So many entrants in that tournament, you've got to play all day for a few days. And he's done that the last few, and he's still here. One of the papers this morning suggesting that 43. Glenn Durant was going to flip over to the PDC after this. Well, if he does so, it's news to us, and he has said quite emphatically that he intends continuing as a BDO player. And, of course, if he wins this title here, he's guaranteed enormous money through public appearances, through exhibitions. For Mark McGinney, if he wins it, I mean, it, he might say it doesn't really matter and that he's in it for the glory, but it's life-changing. Of course it is. Look at players who've made finals in the past and who have won it. They still dine out and drink out on the fact that they won this title or made the final. And there are players who came so close, who didn't get their fingerprints on the trophy. That's going to help Glenn Durant, his second maximum. Putting him on 62. How can McGinney respond? Can't leave a finish now, McGinney. So 62. Based on the checkout percentages, this is about to be hit. Very likely now, double 16. He's missed one. He's missed two. Yeah, but it's going to come back because McGinney not on a finish. That indifferent last visit has cost him dear. So it's still Glenn, who's the big favourite on his throw. Good last darts, but double eight. Double eight. It's not a bad gate. Proved that way. Third leg of this second set goes the way of the Middlesbrough man. Psychological advantage sometimes when you go close like that, other times not so because it can block you out. But that time it helped Glenn Durrance. Another thing we've got to take into consideration for this final is that the trophy is very, very close to them in their eye line the whole time. Tantalizingly close. Great start. 140. Annoyed at that last dart. 
you know what a lot of American football teams do with the Lombardi Trophy, John? Go on. They don't wash it all year because they believe that every single fingerprint is a memory. Everybody trying to make this as memorable as possible. Here comes Durant. His scoring is getting better. He's turning the top on and it's very, very hot. Thumbs up to his supporters. That's his third maximum. And Mark throws under pressure here. He's not on a finish yet, Glenn Durrant, but six darts to 1-8-1. One, one. And a break of throw and an equalising set-winning performance now beckons for the defending champion. Championship darts from Glenn Durrant. 51 after nine. We know it's going to be 19 for double 16. When he's hitting double 16, he will leave it at every single juncture. Didn't like the way the dart was sitting in his hand there. Readjusts and hits double 16 for the set. We're still on throw. One set all in an all English final. Van Durant responding on his throw and equaling in the course to the first to seven. And it is absolutely level now. Warm work up there. It's hot under those lights up there on the stage. It's pretty warm in the commentary box, actually. Sweating up in the paddock slightly. <laughs> Little bit, but we love it. The tension of everybody in this room is sending the heat skywards. We're at the back of the hall, quite high up. And that's a rather high score from McGinney. He responds with high scoring at the start of this second, third set, sorry. His second maximum, and look at this straight back from Durrant. 140. Had a plenty to aim at there. Oh, this is good now from Magini. No way is he being overawed. 131. We haven't had a 10 daughter all week, John. He was a 25 away from setting up a 10 daughter, but he'll take an 11 or 12. Well, what he won't do is go for bull. 91. Seen it done before. Not now, surely. Not now. Especially when Durant's on 170. Double top. The tall man from the northwest loves it up north, but now he's got to go east. Oh dear. Right. 170. We've seen Daryl Fitton do it. Is Glenn Durant going to do likewise? No. So McGinney still the favourite. Double 10 required on throw to hold his throw. It's got to hit it. And he does. Got to maintain these really good double stats. If Glenn Durant starts smelling blood, he will just have you for breakfast. It's the doubles at key moments which are keeping Mark Magini in this at the moment because the scoring power is with the defending champion as we anticipated that it would be. Doesn't automatically, though, guarantee that you're going to win matches. Big finishes sometimes are even more important. Some players have the quality of not scoring brilliantly, but still winning. Scott Waits did that repeatedly this week. Absolutely. It's a lovely cover shot. 96. This final could boil down to how many two treble visits McGinney gets. Because we pretty much know that Durant 95. is going to get two big trebles more often than not. Doesn't need too many of those. Nice adjustment. Very nice. Nothing in it. Tight leg. 
Sometimes it's legs like this which have a, a really important bearing on the match. Both guys throwing well or were to that point, and that is not good for Undurant. This is an opportunity for McGinney. Good switch. Another one of those will be handy. That's okay. But Durant now has only got one number in mind. That's 133. Another one of those. Now, B plan, 137. What a great last start. Terrific last start. Well, McGee can still do it, 128. He can after that, my goodness. Treble 14, maybe, for double 16. Oh, he's missed it. I'm amazed, John, he didn't stay on the treble 18 for double 10. It was such a perfect lie. Is Durant going to punish him? Double nine. Important dart, this, for Glenn Durant. And he's missed it. Magini now poised to step in with a break of throw. His supporters sense this could be pivotal. Double 20. Yes, he's, he's taken it out. The break of throw, 2-0. Glenn Durant genuinely double 18. He wasn't mentally ready to hit double nine. Either he thought he knew he was going to hit double 18, or he thought the dart was in because he did have a little pause after he threw that dart, and then he had a dart in his hand after throwing for double nine, and he couldn't use. Break at the end of this set. Now Mark McGinney would wish to win this leg so he can leave the stage as quickly as possible. 2-1 up. One, Durant has other ideas. Very similar to set number one, where McGinney was 2-0 up. And then Durant started to feel something. Well, he's in a good position now, Glenn Durant, to force the break. Contrasting styles as well, John. The upright angle of the dart for Durant, a power thrower. McGinney, a glider. Not a great deal of power in the arm. No hyperextension of the throwing arm, just glides them in nice and easy. 140. Good visit. And gets him right back into this third leg of the third set. Magini just needing to take this one to be the set winner. It's an important last start for Durant, puts him on a finish. McGinney would love a 140 here, or better, a maximum leaves a double. 140, playing in a player 161. Back-to-back ton 40s for McGinney, 161 Durant for the break of throw. Can't be done. So as the break, the little interval approaches, McGinney, favourite now to Mark take this set. Chevalier team, the target. That is wonderful. Two dots for double 12, Here's and he only needs one. one. Clinical Mark stuff from the BDO number one. He goes in to the break. Two one in front, very similar to the situation we had after set one. As you were, gentlemen, it's going with throw. McGinney, 2-1 to the good. What a brilliant start to his first final for Mark McGinney. 54% checkouts, and that is making the difference at the moment. He edges the defending champion two sets to one. This could develop into a very, very tasty match. far producing a brilliant performance here but he's got to keep it going remember Durant came from behind against Jim Williams in the quarters let's rejoin your commentators Mark McGinney revving up the crowd wanting their support it's not often that six to one shots wind up winning a two a two horse race that's what Mark McGinney was but the fact of the matter is that the dream for him is very much still attainable. He's leading 2-1 in this race to seven. I like what he's doing, actually. He's trying to do exactly what they see in the movie, Gladiator. Win the crowd. 
It's exactly what Oliver Reed said. That noted data. <laughs> he strikes me as the kind of guy who probably would have loved darts. He's certainly the kind of guy who wouldn't have minded being here. I think I know what you're getting at, John. <laughs> Big set for Durant. His darts. Everything's been on throw set wise in this match so far. Well, you have to start thinking 41. from a Durant point of view. 2 1 down. Yeah, he's had comebacks before, notably against Jim Williams, but the pressure is on him now. I think the pressure's been on him since the first start of the match, being an overwhelming favourite. I think. McGinney may be playing with a little bit of freedom. We've had a few celebrities here watching on through the week. Some of them quite big names. 58. My goodness. A brace of trumps. Is that Vladimir Putin in the middle? Absolutely. Only at the darts do you get two Donalds. 58. I don't think we need a second one in the real world. Now, now, have to be politically neutral. Yeah, absolutely right. Right now, what McGinney's doing is he's trying to keep the dream alive. Very much like that song by Freiheit. I know it well. Great song. Very motivational too. I wonder if Mark McGinney is a fan of that song. But judging by his walk on, and his rock signs with his hands all week. I think he's more of a rock guy. Oh, yeah, he likes his metal. He likes his wrestling as well. I was trying to put him straight on that one last night, but he wouldn't have it. Yeah, good luck with that, John. <laughs> Got taken along by his dad when he was about nine years old and was smitten. Durant now for the holder throw, double 16. That's a great finish. And a 15 dart leg. Nicely away. We've done a few games together this week, Mr. Rowling. We've had a couple of classics, and we said at both of them that it had the air of going a long, long way. This one's got that same feeling. I didn't think so before it started, but it is bubbling up really nicely now. We're going to get evicted after six completed sets with Vassos and Tony O'Shea picking up the commentary there. There's always the possibility of barricading the door. In the words of a northern guy, it's dear nine in the Lakeside house. 96. You've got the right accent, haven't you, for that sort of thing? That was my attempt to be from Sunderland. Don't do that very often. Beautiful cover shots. Durrant. In a good position now. How's McGinney going to respond? Because Durant would dearly love to have the break of throw here. 121. Big darts coming up from Glenn. When you're on 267, he's going to try and push this one in as well. That's an amazing dart. Under pressure. The lie wasn't perfect, but he had enough power to just stick it in there. Mark McGinney can't do a deal about it. And 60. so now it is 87 required for the break of throw for Glenn Durrant. Perfect. Double 18. Probably like a dart from Durrant. 11 darter equals the best we've seen this week. The majority of the best darts we've seen this week have come from this man. Very, very good indeed. The checkouts have been exemplary in this match so far both of them really good really good figures those are and Paul knows as a pro data that if you're throwing and getting better than 50 percent well you manage the time you'd, you'd exchange what you're actually producing for that that's good I totally agree I once had a world championship match where I had a stratospheric statistic of an 83 percent checkup percentage and I came off stage and said well I'm never going to do that again and you were right. Absolutely right. Never did. Not so far, anyway.
<laughs> Brave talk. Hopeful and optimistic, John. <laughs> Durant on darts. There's the grandchildren, Oliver and Danny, of Bob Potter. And Barbara Potter. Been hosting this World Championship for many a year. And a very special atmosphere as ever here at Lakeside. Not too far off his 90th birthday now, Bob, but he's still in great nick. He looks great for his age. Powerful darts from McGinney. Puts him almost level with Durant, but Durant should get 140 here. Does. Does for Dozer. And moving towards a leg victory, which would square it up once again at two apiece. Sixteen. 46. 46 then for Glenn Durant. Well, we know where he's going to go. Right there. For this. Very unhappy with that dart. Double eight now. 38. Well, rare misses from Glenn Durant. 137. Treble 20, first port of call. And he's got it. Treble 19 for double 10. Not this time. A few theatrical oohs and ahs from the crowd. They're liking the performance of the underdog so far. But Glenn Durant, the defending champion, poised. Won't be the last ooh we hear this afternoon. Two very, very close calls. Bit of crowd interaction. No score. And he well, goes low, but too low. Well, I never. Hard to acquire 40. Glenn Durant can't believe it. McGinney can. Tops for the break. Yes! One thing we have learned about McGinney in this match so far is that if he's got double top with three darts in hand and he misses it high with the first one, he can find the adjustment. Well, he's known by his fellow players. I was talking to Wolfie about Mark McGinney and he said one thing about him. He says he's fearless. He really does believe and, he, and he's not going to get affected by being under pressure against Glenn Durrant. He's more likely to quake as he did yesterday in the semi-final against a player who he expected to beat and suddenly it's not going right and it was a frustration which was getting to him against Glenn Durrance he's just concentrating focused absolutely 100% on his game this is actually the best I've seen McGinney look all week he looked like a cat in headlights against Wolfie Saturday last week that's what Glenn needed after an uncertain end to the last leg. And there was a stare from Duzza at that 60 as if to say, you will be hit when I tell you you're going to be hit. 140 followed by a 180. His sixth maximum and his average now is close to 100. Look at that. Sheer determination. 181. Time on his side. McGinney not on a finish. Well, Durant leaves that 1-1-6. It gives him two pokes at the treble 20 for a double. But he's going to be under it. McGinney has left a good number. This is a key shot now in this set. Big, big moment for Glenn Durant's hopes. Needs to close this out. Great first dart. That'll do. Tops now. Perhaps the biggest darts that he's had so far in the match. And he's taken it. And it is level at four apiece, at two apiece, and Glenn Durrant, my two, word, what an important first. double that was, Paul. Very, very good indeed. As you see, the dart climb over the first dart. Very good checkout. And I thought we were going to see a Glenn Durrant shuffle there, but I think he only does that when he go into a break. Doesn't want to expel too much energy, just looks at the trophy and over to his entourage and said, right, let's kick now. Absolutely level the match. Oh, 
do the treble here. 85. Great adjustment. Two more sets till a break, John. Could be a really key moment coming up in the next few minutes. 54. Someone could be two in front. It could be level. Going at 3-3, match would be absolutely wonderfully poised, wouldn't it? If you think you're doing anything else with your afternoon, forget it, stay with it. Susan Durrant on the right there with the blonde hair. Anne-Marie. Mark Beguini's fiancé watching as well. And just to echo the words of John Rowling, if you want a cup up or any other sort of libation, get somebody else to get it. Don't leave the sofa. This could get good. 16. You lay down the law like that in your house? Absolutely not. <laughs> That's why I just said it here. Very brave when you're in this commentary box. 140. We've got some very good staff working with us this week. They've brought me many a peppermint tea. Mark McGinney's got himself into a good position in this opening leg. 44 needs to take this though. Double 16. I'm surprised he didn't go four tops. Oh, only he knows. Why went that way? And now we know. Sometimes you see things in the practice room as far as shall I leave tops? Shall I leave 16s? Well, it doesn't really matter because he's hitting both of them. It can be a tricky thing sometimes to second guess the mind of a darts player. How you feel at any moment, isn't it? And some of the guys who've been in this tournament, John. They love getting on that dartboard, they love getting on the stage, but you put a microphone in front of them and they close up. They don't like to do the media side of things. One guy who's not shy of the media side is Glenn. 43. Loves to talk about his homeland, his game, his ambition. And today he wants to join that club of Bristow, of Barneveld and of Wolfie. 85. Looking to take this title once more, but he's having a real battle. Mark McGinney is making it an awkward afternoon so far for Glenn Durrant. 96. Outscoring Mark McGinney, but Mark McGinney's nerve is holding at the crucial moments. 42. Interesting that Mark McGinney uses flights that used to be used by the great Phil Taylor. As we see another maximum from Dozer, perfectly timed, leaving a lovely look in 82 in this leg. This match is getting more jittery by the leg. And see the focus is being yanked up. Bullseye for Durant. Double top for the hold of throw. Well, he'll get another chance because McGinney not on the finish. He'd love a 1 3 4. And he's going to get one to leave exactly what Glenn's got. But he only just got that 1 3 4. As Uncle Fester watches on. Interesting snack. Double ten. <laughs> yes, good dart. I think Uncle Fester's got his iron for the deer. That was a good leg from Durant because he was under pressure. And if he missed those doubles, it handed some impetus back to McGinney. And he was up to it. Little message to our younger viewers, and I know there are many of you at home. Don't eat light bulbs. 
Yeah, they're a bit too crunchy. 140. And a bit too edgy. But this is a very edgy match. They are right in the thick of it now. Oh, and a lovely 180 from Magini. His third of the match. But Durant is bossing that statistic on seven. But he's throwing really well on his own when he has the darts, Magini. It's almost what as though he's it? cranking it up just that little bit and producing darts like that. You saw the lovely arch of his gently thrown darts as they reach that treble 20 there. And he's in a really good position to hold his throw. I learned many years ago from a northeast dart player called Davy Richardson. When I was younger, he said, don't let anybody break you. Hold your own throw, and if you can do that, you'll be a very dangerous player. Wise, wise words from the guy who's been on this stage many times. Let's see if McGinney can do it now. Durant's not on a finish. 92. Treble 20, maybe. Double six now. Oh, brilliant. What a great checkout that is. 92. He is taking some shaking off. Glenn Durant has got a real battle on his hands here. Well, there's only one way to describe that checkout, and that's classy. Durant not on a finish, but he takes it anyway. So, Mark, stay classy, Stockport, in the words of Anchorman. A very, very good hold, and now his favourite for this set. Tony O'Shea's going to be coming in soon. That's not him, that's the Tin Man. He was the right colour. Tony will be uh, hoping, I'm sure, although maybe not voicing it, but he'll uh, maybe have his Stockport hat on secretly. I think he might. Checkouts have been great in this match. They've dipped a little bit, but McGinney has held his around that 60% mark almost all of this match. It's Durance that have capsized a little bit. See there from average is Glenn Durrant's superior, but it's the finishing of Mark Magini. Allied to that lovely smooth throw that's kept him right in this battle. Leading 10 9 in legs, Mark Magini. I don't know about you, John, but I think this final is flying by. Encapsulating stuff. It's good stuff, isn't it? Very much so. 16. We're talking about great finals. This could yet develop into one to rank with the best. Glenn Durant on a finish, 144. Mark McGinney not able to get his 40. throw under any real pressure there. Two treble 20s for double 12. That's prime to be hit again. Double 12 is open for business. 120. Tremendous effort, wouldn't it? Right, 243, Magini. Well, he'll be a bit disappointed with that after that first dart. He'd be very disappointed with leaving a bogey number as well. It shouldn't really matter. Double three, but he might decide to bust it score. didn't want to be lumbered on double three if McGinney left a double very smart thinking from the existing Lakeside champion some darts players when they're doing exhibitions Eric Bristow being one of them they go down on their knees to hit that double three I think uh, if Glenn Durant had done it at that stage it might have been construed as taking the mick now he's got to hit double three Massive moment well, in this match. That's why he didn't go for it. Mark did 70. 70 then. This is huge. 20 and tops. One dart. No. Well, he decided to bust a couple of shots ago, but now he's on one for the madhouse. That's a good one, that because now it's open perfect marker this should be leg over 
It isn't. He dragged it to the left. Mark McGeady unexpectedly gets another chance. Three from seven on double tops. And that is game shot and set shot. Mark McGeady is ahead again. And once more, Glenn Durant, the champion and the big favourite, under pressure to respond. What psychological damage have those missed doubles done to the current champ? That leg was over. But like you said earlier, John, it's not over till it's over. And you've got to get that outer ring or that middle piece in the middle. He didn't get them. And McGeaney pounced. He's hanging in there, Mark McGeaney, and playing great match darts. Holding his throw. Every set he's got the throw, he's taking 77. it. And now he's got the opportunity to get a two-set lead if he can pounce in this set. There's a break at the end of this set. 3-3 or 4-2. Goes without saying, it is a big moment in the match. The timing of the set as well. I wonder who's going to want it. Who's not going to want it? 16. If McGinney wins this set, he will not want a break. But Durant will. He's going to have to. Much as he'd like to continue. That's brilliant. Fourth maximum. Absolutely smooth as silk. The statistics are lying to us right now. Durant with the better average. McGinney is beating him 3-2, under 90 Mark average. Now, he can do it now, six darts from here, for the break of throw. He knows it, that is focus. Good darts from McGinney. And Glenn needs to be very close to Mark now, if not a little bit closer to the finish One, that ton is the bare minimum eight. of what he needed but this could be leg over right here 16 for double it is double 16 and it's a it massive dart he's broken oh, yeah. Glenn Duran in the first leg of this set could we see the kick of McGinney starting to happen I read the messages I read the tweets and I read those saying, Mark McGinney, number one, rubbish. But he's proving his point here 75. at the moment, proving it big time. He's proving that he's got the grapefruits. He's a big man with a lot of heart. 81. Anxious times for Durant fans. There's his big mate, Dennis. That's his manager behind him, Mark Elgin. He's got no hair left. He's got no nails left. Whoa. But Glenn Durant's still got a chance. A great response in this leg. Can he get the immediate break back? Well, he's got a terrific opportunity now. It's a good last dart, but not enough. Advantage Durant for an immediate break back, something that I feel he needs to get just to bolster his self-belief right now because he's had it tested in the last few legs. He got three out of three on his doubles first off. Now he's got nine out of 29. That is turning out to be a little bit of an Achilles heel for Glenn Durant. It's a horrible thing when you're a player, lonely on stage. And you get that little bit of doubt in your mind about your doubles. He thought that was in, didn't he? McGee need 144 then, Durrant. Great first dart, needs another for double 12. Yes, there it is, for 144. Oh, and he's just dragged it inside. Three darts at double 12. Every single one of them has gone low and to the right. This will hurt.
possible. This is going to be like a kick in the middle of his body to Durham, but he can't quite get there. And Durham's got to get double six this time. Composes himself. Important for Durham, massively so. Double three. Oh dear. Oh, but he's got it this time. That's the break back for the champion. In a strange sort of darting way. That is a massive boost to the confidence of Glenn because he had 144 at the back end of the last set. Couldn't take it. This time he had it again. It was like deja vu. But this and, time he managed to get it done. And Magini, his throw broken at last by Glenn Durrant. That dominance that he's had. There you see victories on the throw. Whoever goes first, and Mark Magini. 12 of them. Glenn Durrant has been involved in some epic games on this stage in the last couple of years. One that sticks out. The game against Wolfie. And the reaction of Durrant at the end of that match was just one of heartbreak. He doesn't want to feel like that today. 140. Long way to go. Durrant with the advantage in this third leg as he so badly needs to take this set to get back onto level terms. Mark McGean has been behind on the averages throughout this match. But all the way, it seems to be Durrant who's having to respond. Yeah, it's one of those strange games that you get sometimes. It's a game of millimetres. It's a game of microns. And Durrant will be very thankful that McGinney has not had a two-trouble visit. Well, 145. We saw him take out 144. Or attempt to. 59. Not able to find those doubles sometimes when they matter, and double 12 has been a problem for him. He's not going to stay there. He's going to go for the ball, and he's got it. What a finish this would be! 110. That would have raised the roof here. Durant on throw. It's a must take now on 86. That's a great first dart, and he knows it. Double 16 talks to himself, focuses, and misses. Double eight. Can't believe that missed by as far as it did. This is massive, he and he's taken it. That was all of the mental training that Glenn Durant has done in the last few years he's having to harness it right now in the first half of the final last year he was involved in a fight and when he came back after the break after six sets with Danny Nopet he went ballistic He's going to need to do the same again, but first he needs to take one more leg to have his own oh, sense of deja seven. vu and be 3-3. Three, three. Well, that's not a great start, is it? Magini on throw. Still in this set. And if he were to win this leg, and his favourite to do so, then the nerve of Glenn Durrant really would be tested. That's a good visit, though, and that's his ninth maximum. Power scoring that you predicted. Ninth 180 of this final for Durrant, and he's talking to that 60 like Jordan Spieth talks to his golf ball, and that's very, very often. He's trying to tell it what to do. Get in that treble 20. Get in there. Get in that treble 19. Get in there. Beautiful darts, absolutely phenomenal.
And a blazing 174 cry from Anthony Dundas. Leaves 100 for Durant. And this is to square it up. Something just disturbing Mark McGinney from the crowd. Needs to try and block that Forty. out. Well, this is a big moment for Glenn Durrant, and he's honoured bogey McGinney. So he's got six darts from here. Surely he won't make a mess of this. 100 required, treble 20. Well, he's coming down for treble 16, double 16. Double 16 now, this is for the set. No. 68. I'm surprised. When you get that treble 16, you really do fancy that, that double. It's a lovely transition from the top of the board to the bottom left. 60 here will be handy. 125. And I tell you what, if Glenn Durant doesn't get this, it is a massive moment in the match. Double 16. But he makes no mistake. So important that he took that one and closed it out. And they go to the break. And Paul and I exit the commentary box. What a match we have helped to build up, build up here because they're leaving now absolutely level. 3-3, it could be a classic. Well, the defending champion up on the averages, but down on the doubles, he's been made to work very, very hard for all three of the sets he's won. McGinney's played brilliantly and hit so many good checkouts. We are all square as we approach the halfway stage of this year's final. Don't go anywhere, this just got very, very hot. Seat edges are doing pretty brisk business. There are very few fingernails left at Lakeside. And it's only really half time. This one, Tony, is bubbling up nicely. It's turning into a real crack of Assos. He looks so cool for them first six sets, McGinley. But it's only three all. It's, it's, it's a fantastic game. Once again, the BDO world number one here. Mark McGinney feels he is destined to win the title this year. And the top seed and defending champion, Glenn Duran. A really good front runner, but he's yet to be in front. Seventh, seventh set. Hello. I think we have a problem with Mark Nick Roll's microphone. On. So let's get that sorted before. Seventh set, first leg, it's Mark to throw first, game on. Microphone's working. Darts working. But there's a wasp in the, or a butterfly, or a moth somewhere in Lakeside. He wants part of the action. There are plenty of bright lights for that moth to be attracted to. Oh, it's a wasp. Has it got a ticket? <laughs> the security is so tight in this place, I bet it's got a ticket. 140. It's got the best seat in the house. Three ton 40 since they came back from the break. Make that four. Well, they dropped straight into it. That break's not caused any problems for either player. Well, that's the question, isn't it? Joking apart, we actually travel over so many borders, travelling to uh, Western Europe, that's uh, actually uh, a valid question. 70. Only 70. But he is on a finish, Glenn Durrant.
went for the triple 18. Triple 17 and tops. Went for the treble 14 there, hit the single 11. You might feel he has to hit this. Treble 14 for double 16. No, unlucky, just the wrong side of the wire. Yeah, probably get the nine to clean it up, leaving 32. Oh, he's gone the other way. Then you require 63. For a break of throw at the start of this seventh set. 18 for double 16. No. Missed by distance. Mark, you require 40. Mark will take advantage of misses from Glenn Duran all day long. Yeah, and he's been super confident on his doubles today as well. Totally different player from yesterday. But so much happier on the hockey today. 134. As he said yesterday, though, he's nothing to lose. Once he'd won his semi-final, he had nothing to lose today. Well, Glenn Duran's checking out 32%. That's OK. But Mark McGinney at 54, that is excellent. He was very relaxed all afternoon, Glenn Duran. Unusually for him, because he's a sort of nervous player. And he was worried, actually, that he was too relaxed. 26. Well, he was super nervous last night, and he's super, super cool today. Really enjoying his first major experience on the big stage there. First world final. 54. I don't think it'd be his last, neither. came through a sudden death leg in the very first match of the tournament on Saturday lunchtime. The Gladiator against Wolfie Martin Adams. And here he is in the very last match of the tournament. And leading. Big Middlesbrough fans. Glenn Durrant has... Middlesbrough logo on his shirt. He was thrilled when I. How about that from McGinney? Fifth of the match. Putting massive pressure on the throw of Glenn Durrant. 78. Mark to treble 19 here. That'll be his first shot. 97 required. Tops it is. For a break of throw. Yes. Third leg is marked to throw first. Game on. Story of the match so far, six sets, all of them with the darts. Eight. This one seems to be going the same way. The darts purists would say that's how exactly it should be, to be honest. Just hold them three throws in the set, you've won the set. Sounds easy, but as we've seen this week, it ain't easy. Powering in with a turn 40, Mark McGinney. In two previous visits to Lakeside, he'd never been beyond the second round. Playing with real belief. Fifty-eight. 
And Marie with plenty to smile about. Mark's fiance. And I think you just saw Sue in that shot as well. Susan, Glenn's wife. And they're both applauding that maximum from Durant, but it might be academic. This is set point for Mark McGinney. Double top he wants. Oh, that is a very loose dart. 18. Glenn with the pass, 64. Double eight. Double four. Yes. Glenn the third man. Glenn Durant. Seventy Mark McGinney here is playing his 150th leg at Lakeside 2018. Someone shouted something in the auditorium. Or maybe extended Six. clapping. By the way, he's played 29 more legs than Glenn Durren. But looking fresher, actually, Tony, isn't he? He's looked fantastic today. 44. Played that way as well, to be honest. It's the same spot, I think it is clapping. Ladies Somebody's clapping. Please, while the players are throwing. Thank you. Nick Rolls, our referee. Asking for order while the players are throwing. Too many darts ago, he was looking at winning the set in probably a 13 dart. I think that's when the first clap happened. He hit the big one after, and um, it's all gone downhill since that leg. Oh, 11 times he's filled it up in this match, Glenn Durant. 39 times this week. 99. And it's left him on a two dart finish. He'll start. Well, 18 for double 16 now, having missed the treble 19. A dart to level the seventh set. Glenn Durant. Big leg is marked to throw first. Game on. What a big leg this is. Now he's got the advantage. Starts the leg. 45. Only 45. Now then. Glenn Durrant will expect to jump all over that. Crowd are getting boisterous. Coincides with the first time in the match, first time in the final, that Mars looks a bit edgy. I wonder if it's affecting him a little bit. I mean, there's a massive crowd in here, they're enjoying themselves, but like you say, normally it's, it's perfect order, but they're enjoying themselves, but there is a bit of noise today. Big visit. Now 
I mean, the thing is, we actually learned to play in the vaults and pubs and, and what have you. The jukebox is on, the pool table's rattling, there's people chatting. They should be used to a bit of noise, really, shouldn't we? I always think the same is same applies to golfers. On the range, they hit well enough, and there's all sorts of hubbub going on. And, and they both played in the Grand Slam of darts, of course. Yeah, of course, yeah. Going back to golf there, some of them crowds, <laughs> they're like football crowds at these, especially the Ryder Cups. Right then, business end of a very important set. He's disgusted with that. Left himself on a finish, but Magini, the favourite to win this on throw. Could really do with a treble here. 40. Still plenty to do. It's a big finish, but well within Glenn's capabilities. He's had a 158 this week. Can't now take out 150. It just strayed into the treble five, that first dart. So treble 17 with his last. 92. when he comes back. If he comes back. He will come back. So Glenn Durrant away from taking the lead in this final for the first time and he is an exceptional front runner should have two darts at a double does have two darts at a double for the set and to move ahead in this final no one high, one low. But McGinney has to hit it. And does. Mark McGinney takes advantage of unusual Durant generosity and moves ahead again. What a confidence booster, that, that double then. Went through a bit of a wobble in the mid part of that, that, that leg and uh, he had a puzzled look when Glenn missed that, that last dart and uh, obviously straight in there. He'd be so tough with that leg. He's escaped from prison in that leg, hasn't he? He's built himself a tunnel underneath the prison grounds and he's emerged scot-free. Mark McGinney back in front. Another set, a seventh in a row, with the darts. Ninety-six. Oh, what did that set mean? That's what it meant. One hundred and forty. Then you require one hundred and thirty-six. Six darts from here to hold this throw if he needs them, which he will now. Ninety-six. Tops when he comes back. Two from six on tops, including those two big misses at the end of that last set. Oh, right in the corner. Oh, snuck in. If that was a free kick, that would be perfect. In off the bar, just tickle that flight as he went in. Fifteen legs apiece, but as you can see, 
Mark McGinney continues to impress with his doubles. Durant less so. 125. Having said that, a 95 average and a 33% checkout percentage would be good enough to beat most players. They haven't won any other match in the tournament so far, I think. 84. He obviously uh, has a, a magnificent running average for the tournament, just over 100. And he's, uh, he's fast approaching that in this game. Yeah, his average coming into this final was 99, Glenn Durrant. 55. As we saw in the uh, Jim Williams games, though, he, he can produce these darts well into a match. If it takes every single leg, he'll play these sort of darts for the whole match. From 4-1 down in his quarter-final against Jim Williams, he only lost one leg. He was borderline unplayable. Glenn Durrant, and he has that. He has that ability to just step it up. Mark McGinney will know this is not over, not even close. 137. Well, a lot of people had written him off for this final, but uh, proved a few people wrong. Yes, good last start. 80 when he comes back. Treble 18 for Bullseye now. No. Thought about it. Hit the wire and just went south, not north. So chance for McGinney to hold his throw. Might go tops, tops. No, went for the treble 20 and pulled it badly. Treble 13 now for tops. No. All right, then. Glenn Durrant looking at double 16. And hitting double 16. Third leg is going to throw first. Game on. What do you think, Tony? Who's favourite right now? Well, to be honest, even though Mark's slightly ahead, you just get the feeling that, that Glenn still is actually the favourite. Maybe, the, maybe the early part of the game, Glenn looked confident and, and he's followed it up. Ninety-five. Mark had lots of wobbles in his semi-final and uh, played well in patches, but had these little wobbles, wasn't taking advantage of, but I think uh, Glenn would take advantage of the, especially when the pressure's on later on in the match. 97. Mark played Mikhail Unterbuchner, a match he would expect to win easily and just edged through, didn't he, 6-4. 16. Match full of nerves. From both players. Exactly. Durham with a significant advantage now in this leg. Throwing for the set. Is it another? No. But a 140 will do very nicely. Treble 18 for Bullseye, which he probably won't go for. Will he go for the ball? No. 92. Sensible darts, really, sensible. With a big lead. It's the Hollywood shot, but it's not the shot for a tense World Championship final, is it? Crowd love a leg to finish with a bullseye. We all do. But a 32, a double 16 will do just as well for Glenn Durrant. To level up this final at Eight four seven, sets six, six, apiece. Six, six, and that is exactly what he does. The defending champion is still in and battling. Eight sets. All of them have gone with the darts. Glenn Durrant has never been ahead in this final, but he's never been more than one set down. Who's your money on then? It's Durrant four. McGinney four in a race to seven.
for all. Can the defending champion produce a piece of history or can Nagini carry on producing the best darts of his life? Let's hand back to your commentators. He came along that walkway, raising his hands, getting them going. Ninth set, first leg is marked to pro first. Hang on. Here we go then. Set number nine. Tony, what are these players thinking? 16. Are they enjoying it? Are they nervous? All of the above. I mean, obviously, if you can't fall to this, there's something wrong, but. But having played eight sets and, and still been all square, they're both thinking they're still well in the game, there's still every chance of them actually becoming the world champion. I think Mark has slightly gone off the boiler touch, to be honest. Twenty-two. Only 22 from Mark McGinney, so Glenn Durrant usually would take advantage of that. 96. And he hasn't really. 85. However, he's basically nicked the darts at the start of this set. Remember, all sets going with the darts so far. And how about this? How about this? Wow. That's the way to bring it back. <laughs> he hasn't left the finish, but he doesn't care. Yeah, that's his 12th of the match, and you, you just get the feeling Season. there's plenty more in the tank there for, uh, for Glenn. You do feel he's got another gear. Maybe another two gears, to be honest. That's what world champions have. One hundred and forty. And that's a lot better. Eighty-five. Good way of going for, for that shot when you want three or three. Two of them trebles uh, would have uh, left him a 170 finish. 83. Yeah, finding that treble bed now. One hundred. Then you require sixty-eight. At sixty-eight to win the last leg. Sixteen for double sixteen. Yes, suddenly he's finding his doubles as well. Third leg is marked to progress. Game on. This time last year, Glenn Durrant was involved in a real battle early on against Eight. Danny Noppert of the Netherlands and then just stretched his legs and powered to a 7 3 victory. On that occasion, it was the 57. crucial sixth leg that he won to go 4-2 ahead. And is this the set that Durant wins 57. to start a charge towards a second world title? Yeah, it was a great final last year against Danny. 
As you said, he had them extra gears and he went through them quite nicely at the right time. And Mark's levels just dropped off a little bit since that last break. How hard is it to maintain concentration for such a long match, Tony? Well, you would think you'd enjoy them little breaks, maybe to refresh yourself or whatever, but what, once you're in a long game and you're playing OK, you don't want to break. 99. And that's why these breaks have affected so many matches this week. There seems to be a shift in, a shift in uh, momentum. When you're playing well, you don't want to come off the stage. 61. Johnny Locken there, the head of the uh, the coach of the uh, Dutch national team. Eighteen's here. There's Wesley Harms, one of those Dutch players. He's lost early in the last few years here at Lakeside Wesley, but he's hung around all week, smiling, supporting the other Dutch players. Enjoying interacting with the fans. I think I mentioned in an earlier match actually the support they give each other, the Dutch, the Dutch guys and gals, uh, is amazing. They're here as one team. <laughs> Lighting up the lakeside. Fifty-seven. Then you require one hundred and forty-two. This is for the set. Can't now finish. Just checking what is left. The 25 is the shot. 102. Mark your point, 96. To hold his throw, it's a must get. Treble 20, double eight. No. No, no, no. So treble 13 to pressure. The double top, the set point 64. for Glenn Durrant. Glenn, you require 40. This is for a sixth leg in a row, a second set in a row. That's Miles North. But that is exactly where he aimed it. And all of a sudden, the defending champion starts to power his way towards another title. Two sets away now. For the first eight sets, Mark looked well in the match. First uh, chink in the armour there, he didn't, he didn't look comfortable for all, all them legs there, and that's it. A few darts just drifting to the left. Sign of nerves, I think. 99. And that checkout percentage is creeping up from Glenn. Mark McGinney hasn't had a dart at a double since he hit double ten to go four three up in two sets. Well, we mentioned that Glenn's won the last six legs, six more. And he's lifting the trophy. 90. But things can change in a heartbeat on that lakeside stage. Which they've done so often this week, it's been, it's been unbelievable. Twists and turns virtually every match. Yes, treble 18 for double 16. Yes, double 16 for a 146. 114. 
Well, he needs to break the throw at some stage, and this would be some way of doing it. Treble 19, yes. Tops for a 157. Mark McGinty! How about that? Second leg is Mark to go first. Game on. Glenn Durrant a whisker away from a 146 and McGinney hits back with a 157. Quite brilliant. 134. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Got a hold here though to make it count. And Glenn Durrant's finding some consistency Whoa. around that treble 20 now. So Glenn Durrant will be first to a finish here and a chance to break straight back. How good a chance depends on this last start. 3.18s leaves tops. A very good chance. Well, he's guaranteed six darts at it. Mark, way back on 176. Missed that triple 17 by a while, so double top to break straight back, and that's what he does. I was beginning to doubt if that, that big trophy was coming back to stop, but after that big kill, I thought, here we go, he's back into it. But as you said, if you if you break, you've got to hold your own throw next, otherwise it's worthless. One hundred and forty. <laughs> he, couldn't, he couldn't decide what to put on this morning, so he went halfway. I wonder who is supporting, maybe both players. By the way, he's on his feet for that. A 13th of the match for Glenn Durrant. A 13 of this fascinating final. 16. Very classy player, Glenn Durrant. Mild mannered and softly spoken away from the hockey, but a real bully on it. Mean machine on that hockey has been for three, four years now. Rightly world champion, 100. looking like a two times world champion at the moment. Oh yes, Dorothy and the Tin Man. Well, the Yellow Brick Road, the Yellow Brick Hockey leads to a check for £100,000 and that trophy. Two. 16 for tops. To hold his throw, to move ever closer. He's hitting the doubles now. 
fourth leg is Mark to throw first. Hang on. At the moment, that magnificent 157 checkout from Mark McGinney, all it was was a small speed bump on the Glen Durrant Highway. Another maximum from the defending champion. McGinney's got no answer at the moment. We said he had another gear, well, he's found it. Another one, straight in the red bit. That one dives south, as Whoa, does that. But he's in command here. A leg away from a 6-4 lead in a race to seven. It's not going for Mark at the moment. One, two, five for the set. When he comes back, Glenn Duran. Oh dear, Mark McGinney putting Duran under no pressure at all. Treble 17 for double 12. Treble 19 leaves double eight here, and he will be back for it. This wasn't happening in the early the early sets. Such a big lead at the end of the leg. They were, they were close. They were both on there. 125. Tops for a 6-4 lead in sets. And we see the Glenn Durrant shuffle. I think he thinks this is almost done. And you know what? He's right. The defending champion just one set away from defending his world title. Glenn Durrant leads Mark McGinney by six sets to four. He has won nine of the last ten legs. Well, that 157 checkout looked as though it was going to give McGinney the platform from which to level the match at 5 all. But we've just seen the Dozer shuffle and he's now one away from a truly historic title defence. McGinney needs to find something and find something fast. And still, he's whipping up the crowd. I'm not sure they need much whipping up. They've been on their feet for most of this final here at Lakeside. He's still smiling, Mark McGinney. Glenn Durrant, all business. One set away from becoming just the fourth man to successfully defend this Lakeside world title. Is there any way back for the gladiator, Mark McGinney? Or is this as far as it goes? This is the last practice dart, and we're underway to a finish. 11 set, first leg, it's Mark to throw first. Came on. He's looked a, little, uh, looked a little flat in the last two sets. I'm wondering if that whooping the crowd up's taking any energy from him. Has to find his best darts and quickly. 46. Not what was required. Just the way it's gone for him in the last couple of sets. Instead of the treble 19, the treble 7. Just missing by a millimetre. But it's been enough for Glenn Durrant to take advantage. Yeah, he's leaked a few darts out to the left there in big fives. And uh, you see, they're both actually throwing a slightly under the tournament averages, which, uh, again, there was a big difference in, in between them at the start of the match. More like it from McGinney. 
It's a measure of Glenn Durrant's domination of the last few sets. 85. In the last three sets, the only time Mark McGinney has had a dart at a double was at the double top to close out the 157. Otherwise, he's just been a spectator as Glenn Durrant has been taking aim and hitting the doubles. So he's actually been doubling at 100% for the last two sets. It was just that one dart at that one shot. Well, he's on a finish now, Mark McGinney. All he can do is hold his throw, win this set, and then you never know. 121. Mark will require 140. No, so it can't be done now. 100. Good last start. Leaves him tops when he comes back. Unless... Glenn Durrant can achieve something special. Which he could, you know, he really could. Two twelves. 117. Mark in the bar, 40. How much pressure is on this start at double ten? An awful lot of pressure. But it's pressure the Gladiator is equal to. Big dart that. Had to win that first leg after the break. Not just to hold his throw, but just to give him a little more confidence. Seems to have been lacking it the last couple of sets. So we mentioned how dominant Glenn Durrant has been in the last three sets, losing just one leg. Being punished just once, missing double 16 and the double to take out 146. And watching Mark McGinney hit back with a 157. But other than that. It's been plain sailing, which is why it was so important that Mark McGinney won this first leg of this 11th set. Those are the averages, and they bear out what's happened 86. on the scoreboard. 23-17 now to Glenn Durrant in legs. 45. He's just chuntering to himself a bit now, Mark McGinney, isn't he? I'm not happy where his game is at the moment. He's, he's, he seems to have lost that, that will. 140. Well, doesn't help when your opponent keeps doing things like that. The will or the belief? Probably the belief. 85. When you require 93. I'd much rather play poker against Mark McGinney than Glenn Durrant, I'll tell you that. Treble 14 for double 16. But he will be back. 53. For double top. After these three darts from Mark McGinney. 18 would leave tops here. Yes, good dart. Glenn, you require 40. Now, Glenn was missing these in the early sets of the match. Game Not so much now. Glenn Durrant, third leg, it's Mark going first. No margin for error now for Mark McGinney. He's two down with three to play. If he's broken here, that might be it. Durham would have the darts. 135. 
for the match. And I think Glenn realised that then. He's, first time I've seen him say, come on. Got to score big. 96. Susan in the background there and Anne Marie, Mark's fiance in the foreground. They've been put through it this afternoon, slash evening. He is on a finish, Glenn Durren. If Mr Fitton's watching this, I think he'll be watching it through through fingers. Yes, Daryl Fitton currently has the £5,000 prize for the high checkout, and this is as good as it gets, the 170. There's not many more pan more chances to actually uh, achieve that finish now. We did see close, it I think. from Justin van der Howe, the youth world champion in the youth final. What a final that was on Thursday afternoon. Yeah, the future's looking bright. Great player, nice kid. 140. Then you call 112. Just needs one treble here. Treble 20 for double 16. It's a bit of a blocker. It is a bit. But he's found a way. And now to move a leg away from the title. That green bit. 96. Oh, well, this is must hit. 19 for double 16. Huge dart. 43. He can be excused a little there. The pressure must be immense on him at the moment. Takes a moment to compose himself and then takes aim at double eight. And now double four. Pressure huge on both players. 12. Wood. You believe it! Hits the double four to hold his throw. Wow. No change in expression from Glenn, though. Straight back into business. That's what I meant about the poker. <laughs> 121. 84. He could do with two more of those. That'll do. That will do. And Marie sensing that Mark McGinney might be just coming back to life. 18. You don't want to bounce out any time, but at this stage of a final. She wanted more than 60, so did Mark. It means he's not on a finish. Sure, and they were actually uh, three well thrown darts then. 59. Not really punished. It's getting a bit twitchy, isn't it, Tony? That's just in the box here. <laughs> Well, it can be done. 
It can still be done. Or well, stayed there for treble 20, double nine. Big 18 leaves Tops if he comes back. But this is set point. Mark McGinney. Oh. So 15 for the bullseye. He didn't want to make any mistake with a big 15. Didn't go for the treble. Went for the big 15, leaving him the bullseye, which didn't quite come off. So for two all. Oh, this is drama. Seven missed doubles in a row from Duzza. Two at double eight from Mark McGinney to take the set and to close to it in one. We thought the story of this final might have been written, but Mark McGinney wants to add a chapter or two. We'd sort of written him off there, but he's only uh, three legs here from, from all square. I think we'd all written him off five minutes ago. 38. And only 38 to start set number 12 from Glenn Duran. He is human. Fifty-seven. He'll be trying to forget the fact that he's just missed seven straight darts at a double, Glenn Duran. One hundred. Having only missed seven in the previous three and a bit sets. Yeah, it's one of the strongest points of his game. That's why he's the uh, the best player in the BDO. One hundred and thirty-four. Suddenly the gladiators feeling it. And Durrance feeling the pressure. How will he cope with it? 83. Just in case they forgot what this match is all about, forgot how important it is. In the drama of the occasion, that trophy 26. is in their eyeline every time they approach the hockey. And every time they walk back and collect their darts from the board. I remember thinking several times in a couple of them finals, why are they teasing us putting that in, in view? <laughs> and when I was struggling, especially in the Scott Waits game, I turned around and I saw it, and every time it looked smaller and smaller. <laughs> 85. Then you require 140. To hold his throw. Doesn't need to take it out on this occasion, but he'd like to take at least 100 out of this, for which he needs the treble 20. 16. Treble 20 for double 10, usual for Glenn. Oh, no, he's gone tops, tops. There's one of them. Now the double 10. And he hits it. That's usually a sign of confidence when you go for two double tops. But after missing all them doubles in a row, I'm surprised he went that way. Got there in the end, though. That's all that matters. I think that fist pump was aimed directly at the trophy, you know. I'll see you in a bit, he says. 58. and flows again. Somehow, Mark McGinney has to find a way to hold here and break the Glenn Durrant throw. He has to win this set or it's all over. 140.
big score, an absolute requirement. And a big score is exactly what Gladiator delivers. Gosh, how he needed that. One hundred and thirty seven. Needs another one, to be honest. Might get it, you know. Does get it! High-class bottle from Mark McGinney. He was nowhere in this leg, and all of a sudden he has two darts to win it. Well played. World class bottle, that Tony, wasn't it? He is fighting like a gladiator. Seems to have drifted out of the game. One. He's come back fighting the lad. What's the quote from the film? What you do in life? echoes in eternity 85. well what he's doing on the hockey might well echo in eternity if he can bring this one back from the brink one. somehow though he needs to find a break in this set it's not going to help him unfortunately Amory has been a very calming influence during his matches this week. Just a little message. We saw her say calm down a little bit earlier, as she did in the semi-final against Mikhail and Buckner, and that kind of worked. But Glenn Durant, favourite now, to move to within a leg of victory. It sort of uh, looks as if you're saying, uh, twist it. Maybe he's not twisting his wrist as much in his, his action as he, he normally does. Maybe she's spotted something. Bit of coaching from the sidelines. Is that allowed in darts? <laughs> no, so he won't leave a finish. 83. Six darts from 109 to move a leg away. Treble 19 for double 16 if he wants to do it on this visit, and why not? Treble 18 would leave double 8 from here. 93. And that's what he will aim at when he comes back. Yes, good pressure from Mark McGinney, but the man from the northeast aiming at the southwest segment of the board. Perhaps he's more at home with a double four. I think he thought he got that. Oh, and now double two. No. It's now ten darts he's missed to move to within a leg of victory. Mark, nerves, nerves, nerves from Glenn Duran. Mark McGinney. How are your nerves? Oh, he's done it. There is life left in this final. Plenty of life. So Glenn Durant's not so much faltering across the finishing line, he's faltering just to, to get a look at it. 
Ten darts to move to within one leg of victory, and he's missed them all. To be honest, at the business end of these legs, these important legs, that's normally where Glenn's at his best. He is a great finisher, isn't he? A great closer. Finisher of matches, he's the best, that's why he's the world champion. Proves pressure gets to everybody. And you can tell when he's not happy because he tries to swallow his dart. That's uh, something he's learnt from Phil Taylor. When, yeah. when Phil had little problems, he used to uh, munch away on the fly. <laughs> 134. Two terrific visits of one, three, four. Four excellent darts at the treble 19 from Glenn Duran. He's also a, a very good forgetter, isn't he? to take us all the way not to be this time but the way Glenn Durant's been finishing over the last few legs you'd fancy McGinney will be back for that 48 this is to take us into a deciding leg in the 12th set there was no room for error so, 18. Mark the require 48. Here we go. Here we go. Three 16s. There's one of them. And there are the other two. And we are going all the way. A deciding 13th set coming up. And whoever wins this will be champion. Everybody on their feet in the auditorium. I'm not a gambler and I'm not going to start now, but if this was a boxing fight, it'd have been stopped at 6 4. He was on the floor, he's got himself up and fought back unbelievably. Well done, Mark. Just to let you know, in this deciding set, and two legs apiece, if we get that far, then you have to win by two clear legs to negate the advantage of throwing first, which Mark McGinney has here. 81. Then, at five legs apiece, if we get that far, it's a sudden death leg, and they bully up closest to the bull to decide who throws first. Just to remind you, in the very first match of Lakeside 2018, Mark McGinney here was taken to a sudden death leg by Martin Adams, Wolfie, the three times former champion. He lost the bully up, won the leg. And here he is into a deciding set in the last match at Lakeside 2018. Tell you what, and in between, Tony, it's been a cracking week, hasn't it? It's just an example of every game this week. There's been so much, so much pressure on the, on the lads and lasses. Fitting that it should end this way. Well, those are the averages for what they're worth, but this is a match right now. 66. It's all about who's going to win, not who's going to score the more flashy or impressive darts. Still, Mark McGinney's checkout percentage at 51 is staggeringly high for a match of this magnitude. Mark, you require 114. To move ahead again. Treble 18 for tops. Fifty-eight. 
Then you require 49. 17. For double 16. Two darts for it. For the breaker throw. One dart at double eight. 33. Where are those doubles, he says. I've never needed them more. So, to hold his throw, Magini. Double top. for the first time in five sets. But Durham shows his considerable class. Finding another gear at the start of this deciding set. We had seven perfect darts. Mark McGinney still has the chance to take out the perfect leg of darts. And still. And still. But he'll take a 140 given the match situation. 181 after six darts. Chance to break, perhaps. And a chance to move to within a leg of a title that seemed so far away 20 minutes or so ago. He will be first to a finish, Mark McGinney. Because Durant, with that 45, has left 176. That's the first time I've seen Glenn actually look rattled. Treble 20. Yes. 140. Outstanding pressure from Durant. You'd expect nothing less, but this is for 2 0 in the deciding set. Two darts at double 12 for Mark McGinney. Oh, double six. Yeah, he has hit it. Seven, Suddenly, Gladiator is a big, big favourite to lift the title. McGinney with the darts, one leg from the title. No one has been closer today. 46. It's happened again, though, that big release of energy after such an important double. And then he follows it up with that. 46 after, after going 2 0 up. That big cheer he gave himself has just took a little out of him, I think. Still needs winning. Ninety-six. And basically, Darren's nicked the darts in this leg. One. Just sometimes when the players are throwing, you can hear a pin drop at leg side. There is real. Real tension. I think that was Joe. Mark McGinney's brother. 85. Can hardly watch. We can hardly watch up here and we're paid to. We've got to. <laughs> you getting paid for this? What a time this would be to hit the big checkout. 
60. Glenn Uropara, 170. He's actually got six darts for it if he wants them. No, he misses the second treble 20, so we'll move across to 18s, and that is an outstanding visit to the hockey from Glenn Duran. Two 18s when he comes back to break straight back. 84. Then you require 36. Oh, where have the doubles gone? Game that the was game. much needed. They know it. They know it. He knows it. To throw first. Game on. And we're back on throw in the deciding set. Durren holds here. We're into a tie break as we were in the first match 16. of the championship. No, no, he says. There was a small chance, a small chink of light. With Durham only shooting 60 with his first visit, but this one's not 18. much better. That was a good dart. 18. Tony, how easy is it to ignore the situation? 58. You, can't, you can't ignore it. Can't ignore it. It's all instinct now. It's, get, it's got this close. I've been in this situation a couple of times, and uh, you can't plan ahead. You, it's instinct. You just that leg, that treble, that double. It's all in the moment now. Well, in this moment, and at this moment, that was huge from Durant. Gladiator storm straight back. He's been doing it all day, getting the crowd on their feet. Twenty-five or ball with his last dart. One hundred and five. Good thinking. Ninety-two. Let me require one hundred. This is for two all in the deciding set of the final. 16 for tops. Oh, he's missed big 16. 84. And if you were wondering whether they feel pressure, that dart proves they do. This is for the match. This is for the title. Can't now be done. Oh, it can. Treble 20 and ball. 94. Then you require 32. In a normal dart match, you'd put your house on this. But this isn't a normal match. 94. Must hit double four. McGinney thought it was in. Two fours. No. No. Match dart. Mark McGinney. Durant can't believe he's missed those darts at double 16, 8 and 4. This is for the title. No, and now it can't be done. No score. He's decided to bust it. Surely now. Glenn Durant will hit a double two to extend this final into a tie-break situation. I think he'd put his darts away. He was so convinced McGinney would hit the double 18 and then the double nine. This is as big a double two as he's ever taken aim at. Somebody shouted boo in the crowd. And again, somebody 
tried to put him off, but he would not be put off. He finds a career double one. A huge start. Ladies and gentlemen, with a score six sets all and two legs all, a reminder the final set must be won by two clear legs. Should the score reach five legs all, the eleventh leg will be sudden death. Fifth leg is Mark to throw first. Came on. Well, would you believe it? Tony? Well, I've been in three finals, and I never actually got the chance to have a throw at a double to win it. I just, I just can't comprehend how Mark's feeling now after missing all them doubles. Two of them, one double eighteen, and one double nine, for the title. Eighty-five. Everybody who's had match darts in a lakeside final a men's final 42 has gone on to win the title apart from mike gregory in 92. 92. but history means nothing right now One. it's all about nerves and skill and bottle and desire Durant won that last leg with his sixth dart at a double. 123. It's all about who can hold it together the best from now on. Darting drama at its absolute finest. 100. Doesn't leave a finish, McGinney. Big chance here for Glenn Durrant to break the throw. Then he'd have the darts. With a chance of closing it out. But only 44. It is a finish. Maybe 18s? Yes. 94. Glenn Yorkwell, 149. Treble 19 for double 16. It's still on. A 149. What Can a time to do it! To that, no. that is immense! A massive moment in this final. Sink leg, it's Glenn to throw first. Came on. Would you believe it? Struggling on his doubles for the last two and a half sets, and suddenly he pulls that out. And now he has the darts, Glenn Durrant. And he's never been closer than this. A leg from defending his title. I've said it before, but that's what world champions do. When the going gets tough, they can pull anything out of the hat. A 1-4-9 finish. At this stage, this stage of a final. And 131 with his first visit here, throwing for the match. These are a little nervier, though. Good last start. He's been to the brink before, Mark. We know he's got it in him to bring it back again. 43. Are oh, those darts? For the match preying on Mark McGinney's mind. Durrant has his swagger back. 135. And it's match point Dozer when he returns to the hockey with McGinney nowhere. 50. Susan coming back into the arena. She left the building a moment ago, but this could be the moment for her husband, Glenn.
A treble 18 for a double 18 for the title. No, but he will be back. That's a lovely double though. Double 12 when he comes back, and he definitely will be. McGinney to put some semblance of pressure on that double 12. Well, he can't really. He's not hit a double 12 in the match so far. But this one is for the title. No. He will be back. But my, it's getting harder. The doubles are getting smaller. Now, does he go straight for it or two double two? Yeah. He goes straight for the bottom of the board. And once again, Glenn Duran is on top of the world of darts. He defends his title after an epic battle with Mark McGinney, the world number one. It's the final we were hoping for, and it is the final we got. Glenn Duran. The champion again, but he had to survive match darts against him. He had to survive an inspired comeback from the gladiator Mark McGinney. And somehow, Glenn Durrant threw the final dart. And once again, he is the champion. Eventually won it on a double three. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, without doubt, one of the most dramatic finals in 40 years of BDO World Championship Darts. We welcome on stage our presentation party. The owners of the Lakeside, Bob and Barbara Potter, accompanied by BDO Tournament Director, Wayne title and when he had those darts at a double I think few people here thought he'd miss them but he did and he has the runners-up check your runner-up Mark McKinney and we now come to our champion he arrived as the Lakeside World Champion. He's going to walk away with 100,000 pounds, that magnificent trophy, and the title of 2018 Lakeside World Champion. Well, he's been involved in some epic matches on the lakeside stage before today, but before today, he'd lost them. Today, Glenn Durrant comes through at an extraordinary deciding set, and for the second year running, does it, does it, Glenn Durrant, the champion. We have just witnessed two men pouring their hearts out in pursuit of a dream. It is surely the very essence of what live sport should always be about. What an effort from the gladiator McGinney, but it's Durrant who's the history maker live on Channel 4 at Lakeside. What a match.
the dream final. The BDO number one against the current Lakeside champion. Again, has the makings of a fantastic game. Before the tournament started, that's the final I would have loved to have seen, and now it's going to become reality. I'm a fan of Matt McGinney in his BDO number one for a reason. Well, we've played the show a few times. I think he's just about to scrape the upper hand now. I think it's my turn to get one. Played for England with him, I've played pairs with him. He's dead, you know, he really wants to win this title. He's dedicated, he's practiced really hard. He's been there before, he's won it last year. Um, he's a number one seed, he's been a fantastic player all year. So he's going to start off as favourite. He's got ice going through his veins, he has no fear. He will score big and he hit doubles. And I don't think he'd be nervous about playing me. You know, he's played me before and beat me. I was a cage fighter years ago. In there, you just don't quit no matter how badly you're hurting, no matter how badly you're playing on that stage. You just don't quit, so yeah, the mentality is key. If I take the lead, I usually go on and win the match. The Paul Hogan game last year, it just brought a different dimension to me and probably an area of the game which I didn't realise that I had. His scoring power is finishing. He hits the big shots when he needs to. He hits the crucial doubles when he needs to. So I've got to really keep on top of that and uh, try and hit my doubles when I can. You know, I could be a two-time world champion now, and when you stand on that hockey, any dark player will tell you there's a million things that go through your mind, and it's up to you to just focus on the job in hand. The money is nice, but it's all about the trophy, the reputation, the world champion status and the immortality that comes with it. Mark, you're a great friend, you're a great competitor, but this is the Lakeside final now, and I'm gunning for you. Glenn, I love you to bits. We're gonna have a great match with county teammates. I won't like you when you're on that stage, but let's go out there and enjoy it. All the best, my friend, and may the best man win.